Tired of that? I'll show you how to fix it. Well, here we go. We're going to go ahead and disassemble this. Like in my previous video, I'll take out the yeah, phone modem first. Look at that. First of its kind. Do you know that the Dreamcast actually had uh, games that you uh, could chat online with? Not like text chat, but talk while you played. It's, uh, I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's another first for the Dreamcast. I'm using a uh, magnetic screwdriver, and I'm using my camera viewfinder, and I am failing miserably. I'm trying not to scratch the top. I have like three of these things. Uh, I got, got one for $10. And one for I think five dollars, and I think one for twenty. They're still releasing games for the Dreamcast. Forget the name of the company. There's an independent company. I think it's released four within the last several years. All right. This is the culprit right here. Now, me not knowing one night, I just went ahead and put in a regular watch battery. Don't do that, because basically, it's not rechargeable, and the Dreamcast is trying to charge that watch battery, and by it doing that, it can actually um, overcharge it, cause problems, maybe even create a fire. So, it's something you don't want to mess with. Um, if you're looking for the model number for this battery, for a direct replacement, yeah, my fingers are dirty because I was working with wood. So, how awesome was that? Uh, it's ML202. And basically, we're going to unsolder this, the, the pegs that hold this in, and uh, do a direct drop in with this. And then we should be able to uh, record our time, and it will save for maybe for 10 years. I know that's probably pushing it, but. Uh, that would be that would be wishful thinking, and I'm only replacing one of these. I have multiple of these batteries I got on the uh, internet's for uh, very cheap, under five dollars. But I'm just going to use one because I play one machine, and the other two are in, well, one's in my basement for you know when friends are over drinking beer and stuff like that. But one another one's in storage. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get down to this. Um, so basically, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, Disconnect this and uh, roll in that part of the video. Those are the uh, like controller port screws that uh, are in between the controller ports. You can see how it kind of starts lifting up the module there. Really, this must have been a dream to manufacture compared to some consoles. It's very simple. All right, now we've got a we've got a ribbon here, and we've got a like a connector. Let me go ahead and put that in your face so you can actually see it. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to keep the ribbon on here. If it fails, then you know no big deal. I'll go ahead and slap a slap it back in there. But I'm definitely going to disconnect this, and then this right here is going to 
lift out of here once I get those screws off. I'm hoping. I'm doing this with you guys and gals first. I've not uh, ever done this. On my previous video, my previous Dreamcast video, um, I had done that fix several times, so I knew it worked rather well. Just slide out. How does it work? Oh, remove the screws. Remove all the screws. Yeah. important. Okay. So this front piece pretty much stays in. Oh, I could probably pop it out another way. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to get to is uh, these legs behind here. So I am going to take this out. This ribbon cable. And I'm making note that this blue side, at least on, on this model, is down. So, yeah, okay. So, keeping that like that. Because I'll forget. It's, it'll be laying over there and I won't know where it goes. So, boom, right. Put that on the side. Get a closer look here of my poor patch job with a watch battery. You see how it has like these three little legs here? This is, should be a direct drop in. Three legs, three legs. So with the soldering iron, I'm going to heat that up, pull this whole unit out, put this in, solder it, power on the Dreamcast. So I'm going to roll in that, so I'll go ahead and uh, get this out of the way, get the soldering set up. Okay, we're back. I went ahead and got this thing set up to where we can actually start uh, filming it uh, with the soldering iron. Any soldering iron will do, uh, as long as it's hot and can melt, you know, solder. I'm uh, The tin foil is so I don't drop any solder on top of, uh, you know, my wife's kitchen uh, island here. I'm doing it because the light's a little bit better. She would replace my battery if that was the case. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I don't know how hard this is for you guys to see, but I'm just going to heat up the contacts. Now there's ways to do this with like a soldering remo solder, solder remover. Um, it'll basically just suck the solder out, so you heat it up and use a, like, it's called like a solder pin, I don't know. And, uh, you just click it and it'll take care of it, but. This would not be a Technolicos channel special if things weren't done, um, on the cheap and ghetto. That's how I roll. Alright, that one's pushed through. Yeah, I'm just heating it up, pushing it through. There's a bunch of different techniques to do this, to desolder something. Probably far better than this. Can you believe I've been soldering and desoldering stuff since I was a kid? Can you tell? No, absolutely not. There we go, fell out. So that's the old. Now we've got uh, just some holes there, and let's go ahead and put in the replacement. Make sure my pins here are. Yeah, this is uh, such a ghetto operation. I love those dirty fingers. Um, it's such a ghetto operation. I film all this stuff with my phone, which is about three years old. Maybe four. Yeah, 
And you can see this is only goes in one way. I'm trying to let this thing focus here. You get two, and then one. And you just push them right through. Focus. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, solder that into place. This one got bent. Oh yeah, film for realism. One take. Just like you would do at home. All right, that's these legs are are really like tin. They're not. Uh, not very strong. All right, we got it. All right, we got it. Took a while to actually get the legs in the holes. As you saw there, use a little gravity right there to hold it, the legs down. Just gonna push it on the battery a little bit. Got some solder, soldering gun. Let's get to work. Depending on what kind of solder you're using and what part of the world, be careful. Some contain lead, so you want to make sure you're not uh, going to kill yourself or give you some lead poisoning, which is pretty nasty. Not too bad. We'll put a little bit more on that front leg. There you have it. So now I've got the CMOS battery in. All three legs in. And a really shoddy solder job for an amateur because that's what I am. Unplug my soldering iron. And uh, that's it. Let's go ahead and slap this bad boy back together. Ribbon pushes in real quick and easy there. Let's see how it does here. You know, dealing with ribbons like this. Probably be, oh, I don't know why that blinked like that. That was interesting. Like I said in my previous video, sometimes these retain some power, so it's good to power cycle them after it's been unplugged to make sure all the power is out. I'm A plus certified, so uh, you know, in 1999, 2000, yeah, that's a joke. I am, but uh, that test is pretty much a joke. And I'm just slapping screws back together, or slapping screws into the Dreamcast. Yeah, if this doesn't work, I'll post that too. Um, I just, I just find this the Dreamcast very, very simple to work on. I really wish it had a longer life. I wish it was a lot more popular. 
And you gotta figure there are PlayStation 3s and Xbox 360s that lasted. My, I think my one of my 360s lasted two years, and I had a PlayStation 3 that lasted three. How old's this thing? Over 20 years old? Yeah. Still working. Heavy use. I use this thing a lot. Alright, well, huh. Looks, looks good. And feel free to forward, fast forward the video if this is really boring. I just want to show you guys um, everything. Because sometimes I watch videos and people assume stuff. It just, like, oh, just do this, this, and that. And, like, the whole reason I watch this video is because I want to see it done every step. I want to make sure I'm, one, I'm not leaving out something. Two, the one thing you leave out is one thing somebody wants to know how to do. Now, I can't imagine anyone wanting to know how to put screws back into this thing, but, hey. These videos are free for me to make and free for you to watch. Almost done here. Favorite part, there's a LAN adapter for this also. Maybe that's where all the phone, all the chatting was going on, all the internet gameplay. Oh, Dreamcast is back together. Let's go plug it in and see what happens. Dusty arcade room here. I should turn the power on. Alright, sorry, I don't mean to make anyone sick here, but. All right, let's set the date. Today is what? It's not 1998 anymore. All right, well, here's the real kicker. I'm turning it off. I'm unplugging it. I'm turning the power strip off. Plugging the controller. There's no VMU in it anyway. So I'll turn the controller back on. Get rid of the power on the board. Plug this back in. Let's see if it remembers my magical date of today. Well, we did it. So I wish you the best of luck. And I uh, appreciate you subscribing and showing up to the Technolocost channel. More to come.